Okay, this section is about 5.2 binomial probabilities, so we're going to list and compare and discuss exactly what binomial means. Okay, so the word binomial, hopefully you kind of make the connection, the whole bi or the prefix is, is all about two things. So it's a special probability distribution, it's kind of, kind of a completely separate entity, that's why it's in a completely separate section. And basically we're going to have this experiment, experiment has to be a binomial. And what is binomial? It has to be repeated independent trials. The main point of a whole binomial situation is that there are only two outcomes per trial. And we discuss this as saying a success and a failure. So if you can list your possibilities for this experiment to be a success or a failure, we can use the binomial idea. And what it does is actually makes your, your uh, doing the experiment and, and doing the calculations become a heck of a lot easier doing it this way. So what's involved with it? You need about four pieces of information. You need to know how many numbers of trials you're going to do, how many times you're going to flip a coin or how many times you're going to shoot at a target or something like that. You want to figure out how many successes you want and the big one is is you need to know the probability of a success. So that's kind of the, the three big main ideas in order to do this. And then the failure of the success will just be one minus or the complement of the probability of a success because they both together have to equal 100%. So this is just another listing, more listed out, just we need to find n, make sure they're independent, each has the two success or failure, and then we'll figure out p, and then we're going to calculate it. So we're going to jump right into an example of what you might see for a binomial setup. So a sharpshooter takes eight shots at a target. Over the long term, this person hits 70% of her shots and then find the probability that she hits the target exactly six times might be something that you're going to use for this. So what you need to do is figure out is this a success and a failure situation? It is. She's sharpshooter is going to shoot a, at a target. What's deemed as a success? Well, it says that she hits it 70% of the time. So hitting the target is just the success. The failure would then be obviously missing or failing to hit the target. I now can use a binomial situation because I have a success and a failure and nothing else is possible. Either you shoot something out of target, you either hit it or you miss it. What's the probability of a success? Well, over the long run, it says she hits target 70% of the time. So 0 0.70. What would be the probability of the failure then? 1 minus that or 30%. These two should add up to 1. And then the number of trials. How many times is she going to shoot at a target? How many times is she going to be able to shoot at it? Would be 8. How many times are they want her to see if she hits it? Would be 6. If you are able to go through any problem and list these things, this section is really pretty easy. Okay. How do I actually determine the probability of this person hitting the thing 6 times? We have a couple different ways. We have a formula which is on your pink formula sheet. If you look and find for binomial distributions, it's the second one in there. It says binomial probability distribution and then it has a formula and we're going to see that. This table is what you have right now. It's, it's the cream colored table and we're going to look at that and figure it out or we can use the calculator which we will do that in class. So first thing we're going to look at is the formula. So okay, if you can find this on your formula sheet you will always have that at your fingertips. Okay. Now how do we go about figuring it out? We'll see that on the next page, but basically you need to find everything that we just found and then we'll talk about it. So here's your combination. So you're going to use this formula which we used in the last chapter. We need to find our p-value which is the last problem. So n and r, what is it? 8 choose 6 would be the first part times the p-value what did we say the probability of hitting it was? 70%. And how many times, so R is how many times is she going to hit it or be successful? 6 times the probability of failure. And in this problem, how many times would she deemed failed? 2 times. And you would could go through and do this in your calculator. Multiply all that out and you will get an answer. Okay, So here's the exact same thing that I was just talking about. I kind of did it before I flipped to this slide. 
So HU6 formula that you could do in your calculator or actually go to the math and the probability thing and dump it in at, accordingly. And this is what I just said, 0.7 to the 6th power, 0.3 to the 8 minus 6 or 2, you will end up getting 0.296. So you might want to go through and see if you agree with this, see if you can dump it into your calculator and do it accordingly. Okay. The other way you can do this, if you find your number table, your cream color, whatever color you want to call this, here's how this works. We need to find, if you look at the far left column, it has an N at the top, you need to find the page where N is 8. So that's the first thing you need to find. So these are all the possibilities of all the probabilities when N is 8. And then what we want to do, we have a probability that P is 0.7. So if you look at the very top row, you'll see all the different probabilities. Now keep in mind, or if you want to make a note of this, this is when the probability is really nice. It's a nice round number, so 0.7 does show up. So we're going to be able to use this table, which is a lot easier than dumping it into your calculator, if the p-value is a nice round number. Now sometimes you're not always going to get a nice round number, so you need to know how to use the formula or the calculator to calculate it from the last page. But most of the time it's going to be a nice number. And if you can find the p-value of 0.7 on the top, and then we look at our r-value, we wanted 6. So if you follow 6 all the way over to and the p-value from 0.7 all the way down to where they meet, notice that same 0.296 will show up. That's how the, the binomial table of values works. This is also in the back of your book if you want to see it, but I like having it at your fingertips. So here's a big picture of what I'm talking about. So if you can find n is 8, the r-value is 6, and the p-value is 0.7. If you come down and follow all the way over to where they meet, it'd be 0.296. So that's being a specific value. Hopefully that, that kind of makes sense in the visual aid. It kind of helps you out. So before we kind of move on, to earn credit for these notes, I, want, I need a little bit more uh, feedback as how we're going since we're done with four chapters. Please put your name on a piece of paper. I promise you I will not judge you at all or hold it against you. You can be as happy or as upset as you want to be. I just want to get some feedback. Ms. Ripley wants to get some feedback to see how this is going. So what is something that you really like about the setup of Flip the Classroom? Tell me what you kind of like about it, what, what, what makes it really great or whatever. And if it's nothing, then you can write nothing. That's fine. And then also, I would like to, you know, I'm, I know I'm not perfect, so I want you to give me another thing. What is something you like to see changed or maybe tweak just a little bit. I promise you the whole flip the classroom thing's not going to stop anytime soon. So you don't necessarily have to say, hey, so let's stop doing the videos. But what's something that you would like to see changed maybe about the videos? I, I know they're getting a little long, but it's the way it's going to be to get through all the material. Or what's something in the classroom itself, the structure of homework, or maybe me doing more problems in class, something like that. What would you like to see you know, tweak just a little bit, and that would be very, very helpful helpful for me. Moving on to the next slide. Okay, so we're, I'm just giving a hypothetical situation. Let's say we have four trials we're going to do. The probability of a success is 0.25, and I want to find the probability, now some of them get kind of tricky like this, where r is less than 2. So not only do we want exact, you know, we didn't want exactly 2, I want probability of less than 2. What does that mean? I want the probability of z r basically no success and only one success instead of being exactly one number. And many times this is more applicable to these problems. So you need to go to your table where n is 4. We need to follow down the p is 0.25 column. Notice I have two things highlighted here where the success is 0 and where the success is 1. And what you need to do is add up those two probabilities to answer the question. So we, get, we want to include, okay, the probability of no successes would be 31.6%, I guess, and the probability of one success would be 42.2 in this situation. So the probability that you get zero or one success would end up being those two added together. And that's how you go about finding a problem where it's less than a number or and, and likewise, you're going to see one in a little bit where it's going to be greater than or at least you'll go the opposite way. 
you always can add up these probabilities if we want more than one possibility for a success. Okay, what I would like to see you do now is actually push pause, read through this question, and see if you can answer the four questions that are left on these slides. So basically this is one big problem, and I'm just going to go through and answer all four of them kind of quickly. I would encourage you to push pause and see if you can do it. So what is this problem? Uh, suppose probability of certain treatment cures a patient is 30%. So that's your p-value. 12 randomly selected patients are given. So, okay, n is 12. And then uh, find the probability that. So I'm going to do part A. Exactly four are cured here. So if I want exactly four, that means r is four. Q would be 0.7. And what is that probability? If I go into my table, I need to find where n is 12. P is 0.3, and then I come down and see where 0.3 and 4 meet, and I end up seeing that as 0.231. Hopefully you agree with me on that. If we flip the page, what's the probability that all of them are cured? So it's still 12 patients doing it, but all 12 get cured at this 0.3% success rate. What's the probability of exactly 12? Well, if I go to the same n as 12, if I go down to r is 12 now and meet the 0.3, you actually end up seeing that there's no chance when there's only a 30% rate that all 12 get cured. How about none are cured? So if none are cured, then n's 12, r is actually 0 this time, the same percent rate. And if you go all the way up to r is 0 and follow over to 0.3, I see that as 0 0.014, just over a 1% chance that actually nobody gets cured. So that's a pretty good success rate as well. And then here's what I was talking about. You sometimes can be put in a situation where you have to add up a bunch of things. So if it's at least 6, at least 6 means we got to go 6, 7, all the way up to my N. So I had 12, and I want at least 6. That's like greater than or equal to 6. So everything from 6 and above you want to add, and it's still the 0.3, and this is 0.7. So what I did, oops, is you're going to want to add all of those up. And I have not done that yet, so I'm going to grab my calculator. And you just need to add up all of them. So you should see these in a row in order on your table. So 0 0.079 plus 0 0.029 plus 0 0.008 plus 0 0.001 equals and I end up seeing that greater than or equal to 6 or at least 6 is 0.117 so you go, you can go through each one and add them up separately so tomorrow we'll go through a couple of examples in class and then uh, kind of review some things on the calculator. So at the beginning of the hour, right as you walk in the door, if you can hand me that piece of paper with the answers to your questions, I would greatly appreciate it. Have a good day.